Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Uh, first, I wanted to apologize for a little screw up. Um, I accidentally released episode 21 or episode 22 instead of 21. So, a lot of you saw the rocket launch episode before you saw me <laughs> build the rocket silo and stuff. Um, the problem was, I recorded both episodes back to back and then I accidentally edited and uploaded the wrong one first. I wasn't paying attention. So sorry about that. But, uh, you know, for most people who are going to see this at some point in the future, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. So let's not worry about it too much. All right. So we've launched a rocket. Um, if you've done that too, you'll probably see this rocket silo stats that just keeps track of what you've sent into space. Um, I'm not really sure why you would care about this too much. Um, but you can click this little button there to make that minimize and not block your view. Okay, so um, I've got a bit of a to-do list here, um, which we'll start to go over. Uh, in the meantime, I have added another iron mine, which is uh, going pretty well so far. Uh, the reason I did that is because I was noticing that that I was using up all the iron before the next train arrived. So we were getting like waves of iron. Um, and of course, in between the waves, there was no iron being produced and that would kind of bring the factory to a halt. So um, it was time to add another train. Uh, this, this iron mine is nearly empty. I mean, it's really not giving us very much at all anymore. Um, so every once in a while, we'll get a train from here, which is nice, but it's really not doing much. At this point, iron load two, iron load two is still providing, I would say, a significant amount of iron. Um, but iron three is is the one that's going to be helping us out the most at this point. Um, we can see my artillery train uh, doing its thing, taking out new biter bases whenever they get close enough. Um, I did modify the schedule of this train. So we start at supply load and then we go to one, two, three, four, and five all the way around the base. And then it goes back all the way back to supply load uh, and starts the loop again. And then the only wait condition I have on each of these is five seconds of inactivity. Um, so what'll happen is it'll, the train will go to the station if it needs to fire the weapon, uh, it will do so. And then after it, hasn't done anything for five seconds, it'll go to the next, the next station on the schedule. So this way, this train just continues to, um, you know, start from here, it goes all the way around, then it goes back and, and it goes back and forth. And that way it'll just kind of keep things clear away from our wall and, um, take out new bases that form and, you know, just reduce the number of attacks that we're getting. Um, on my new to-do list though, uh, you will notice that we do have a supply train. That's something that we need to do. I wanna set up, um, I wanna set up an automated, no, pardon me. I wanna set up an automated way to, to take uh, repair packs and so forth to the wall stations where they're needed uh, because right now I'm still only using whatever I place there manually and um, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. We definitely don't want to run out. If we run out, then the biters could break through the wall. And since I don't have any other defenses inside the wall, if the biters do break through the wall, it could get, it could get terrible real fast. So that's something that we have to prevent at all costs. Okay. So, uh, the items I've got here, uh, nuclear power, we're going to work on some more today, uh, upgrading the rail system, Right, we've got a big bottleneck here that I want to alleviate. Um, Power Armor Mark II we'll do today. Productivity modules and the supply train. So we'll we'll go into each of those in detail um, at the right time. Uh, but for now, let's do Power Armor Mark II. Actually, um, this is the highest tier of Power Armor that we can get. Uh, it's very expensive to make, as you can see. Um, 
the most expensive parts being that we need 25 speed module twos and 25 efficiency efficiency module twos. Um, so I've been slowly crafting those here. Um, I set this up. So basically I've got, you know, red and green circuits here. Those make speed module and efficiency module ones. Um, and then those go in to make speed and efficiency module twos, which also need blue circuits. And then I had those going into chests. I told them to stop producing once there are 23. Let's look at that again. Everything less than 23. Um, you can use this wild card, everything. It's over here under signals. Everything or anything are both available. Um, and if you do that, then you don't necessarily have to type, you know, you don't have to select the individual item that you're filtering for every single time. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got 23 in the box, and I set it to 23 because I knew I would have two more there when that occurred. So, um, so I've got the ones that I need now. I'm just going to go ahead and tear this up. We're not going to need this anymore. I only did that to get what I needed to make the modules. Okay, I need to get rid of some stuff. Let's get rid of that. Um, I'll get rid of my mining drills, actually, for now. Put those speed modules away. Okay. The efficiency module ones away. All right, uh, so now I just need to grab some electric engines and some low density structures. Ugh, and I'm full again. Okay, let's get rid of some of these wooden power poles. I've just got a lot of extra stuff. Okay, now we've got 30 of those. There we go. And then the last thing I need are 40 electric engines. Actually, let's request some, because I'm pretty sure I have some in storage. Uh, some that I've picked up and thrown away at some point. So let's go grab those. Here we go. I don't know if I have 40. Okay, I guess I don't. I got seven. Now the nice thing about this uh, Mark II armor, I mean there's a couple nice things, but um, the main one is that uh, it'll give us a much bigger equipment grid so we can beef up our personal equipment. Um, it will also give us, does it give us more inventory? It might even give us another inventory slot. I don't remember. Let's see. Inventory bonus size is 30. Yeah, we'll get another 10 inventory slots here in our personal inventory, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my current one. I'm gonna take all my equipment out so that we can put it into the new one. Now, be careful here. Um, because your armor has a 20 slot inventory bonus. So if I were just to remove my power armor right now, uh, 20 slots of what I'm holding would go flying out onto the ground all around me. And especially if you're standing close to belts, it could become a real big mess and be difficult to clean up. Um, so when you're upgrading your armor, I recommend to always pick up the new armor and just put it on top of the old armor. <laughs> so that, that unfortunate thing doesn't happen. Okay, then we can get rid of that. Okay, now look at all this room that we've got. So there's my reactor. Um, I crafted two more uh, personal roboports. 
So now I've got three of those. With those three, I can manage 25 construction bots. Or I'm sorry, 75 construction bots. Um, I've got... There we go. There's 75. Now the other the other good thing is that when you when you have multiple well I can't see it now because I've got because I'm in my robot network but um, when you have more than one personal roboport every one that you add increases the range that your roboports operate at so um, so adding more roboports not only gives you more bots but it also increases their range. Okay, and then we'll put our exoskeleton back in. We'll put our laser defense back in. The night vision, of course, is great to have. Um, I think it would be good to upgrade to some Mark II batteries. So let's go ahead and craft some of those. Um, okay, I need need steel and batteries over here. All right, well, let's do this. I'm putting this here because we've got the low density structures and the blue circuits that we need. I'll put some of those personal batteries in, but I also need to craft a lot more of those. All right, and for those, I just need a bunch of steel and a bunch of batteries. So let's just come down here and I'm just gonna pick up a lot of steel. I also picked up a lot of other junk that I don't want. Here we'll pick up a bunch of batteries. Oh, okay, yeah, and that's enough for 42 of them. All right. And then we'll put those into a chest. All right, so I'm just gonna load it up. Actually, let's do this. Put all the steel and batteries that I have. Right, so every for every 10 of those, I'll get one of those Mark II batteries. And I think I would like to have, well, I don't know. Three or four would be good. Let's say four. So for right now, I'm gonna take four regular batteries. Whoops. And I'll load these in here. And we'll use those as kind of as placeholders. Um, let's put that there. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. I think it would be good to have another exoskeleton. Uh, you can have multiples. Um, each exoskeleton that you carry will give you the same speed bonus. So you can get you can get multiple speed bonuses. All right, let's get rid of those. And let's get rid of these. Okay, good. So let's throw that in there. Actually, let's put these over here. All right, so each one of these will give me a 30% movement bonus. So now you can see that I run 60% faster. Um, some people like to put a ton of them in there. Um, I think I'm going to put one more. But um, to be quite honest, I find that... Um, I find that having a lot of them uh, makes me imprecise with my movements. So when I'm trying to build things, I go so fast that so sometimes I, I overshoot where I want to go. So I prefer to have a little bit less speed and more precision. Um, and now you can see my batteries are taking a long time to charge because I've got all this equipment in here. Uh, so it would be a good idea to have another reactor okay so let's make a second fusion reactor I'm gonna to need to pick up 
50 of these low density structures. There we go. We can put those there. All right, I've got the first of my nice big batteries. So I'll just swap that out. Okay. We'll throw in that other reactor. Great. And then I think I'll move I'll move this equipment down here. Um, I think it would be nice to have an energy shield as well. So let's make 10 of these Mark I energy shields. And um, there we go. Those have a 10 second crafting time each. 100 seconds, that's not too bad. Let me get a few low density structures. All right, so I'll just handcraft that. It'll take a little while, but that's okay. Um, that'll take up another slot. Um, I'll put. I'm going to put one solar panel there because the solar panels and the belt immunity are the only ones that are one by one. So that way, I won't have any empty spots. Okay, so maybe we can do six batteries, and then I'm going to have two by two. Yeah, I'll have a little more space. There we go. So I've got I've got slots for three more things. Um, yeah, the shields will be two by two, so that'll take up one slot, and then. I'll have room for maybe maybe I'll put a couple more of those robo ports as well. Okay, take that out. Put that in. Put that in there and we'll slowly recycle those. All right, we're going to need more steel there pretty soon. So I'll just load in some more steel, another stack, just to make sure that keeps going. Okay, so my shields are almost done. And then the shields will charge. Um, this The Mark II shield will absorb 150 points of damage. Okay, versus 50 for the regular energy shield. All right, and you can see a charge. So now when I take, when I take damage from a biter, you'll see that um, the shield will get depleted first. And then after the shield is depleted, then my hit points will start to go down. Okay, so it does, I mean, it does exactly what you expect a shield to do, right? Okay, then I'll I'll keep making batteries. Um, yeah, this this is probably gonna be, four batteries will probably be enough. Honestly, uh, three roboports is is a lot of bots. Um, you know, you could certainly put in more if you're building. You know, if you're gonna build a big mega base, you might just want to load up as much as you can on the personal bots. Okay. So let's, uh, let's consider that complete and let's get back to work on nuclear. So, um, I have, I think the last time I had set up this unloading station for the uranium. Okay. Um, now the next step is to do the uranium processing, which is what I'm doing up there. Let's run up there so I can show you this. Um, I started to do that before the episode because I wanted to get some processed uranium under our belts uh, for us to begin to use. So these are all the uranium processing gets done in these centrifuge buildings. And the centrifuge has three options or four options. Um, and the one I'm doing here is uranium processing. It takes 10 uranium and then 
it processes it, and 99.3% of the time you're going to get a uranium-238 out of it, and 0.7% of the time you're going to get a uranium-235 out of it. Now, we need both of these things. Let me get rid of that. Um, because you'll see to make the uranium fuel cells, we need one uranium-235, we need some iron plate, and we need 19 uranium-238s. Okay, so that's why we need both of those. Um, now, uh, you've probably noticed, though, that these probabilities are giving you less than a 1 to 100 ratio of 235 to 238, whereas to make the fuel cells, you only need a 1 to 19 ratio. Um, so the result is, is that at the beginning, you're going to have a lot more uranium-238 than you know what to do with. Now, the good news is that there's another recipe called Covarex Enrichment, which we will start doing as soon as we can. Uh, with that one, you take 40 of the uranium-235s and 5 uranium-238s, and you get 41 235s out of it and 2 238s. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking 3 uranium-238s and converting them into one uranium-235, right? Because you get 40 and 5 that go in, and you get 41 and 2 that come out. And that's all it does. Um, so that's a very important process. And once you get that going, um, you'll, you'll almost never run out of uranium until you get to a very, very big base where you're making multiple gigawatts of power. Okay, and that runs in a centrifuge too. Now, the only problem with this one is that you need 40 uranium-235 before you can even start it. Okay, and that's why I wanted to get a head start on this. Right now, I've got 14 of them. Right, I've got 13 in that chest and one in the other chest. So it'll be a little while before I can start the Covarex enrichment. But until then, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to steal two of these things. I don't want to take too many because I want to accumulate 40 as soon as possible. But I'll take two of those, and I'll take a stack of these, and then we can just handcraft uh, some uranium fuel cells to get started. Now, um, each each one of these recipes makes 10 uranium fuel cells. Okay, so if I craft this twice, I'm going to get 20 fuel cells. And so that'll let us run the reactors for a little while, and hopefully it'll be long enough that we can get this done. Now, the other recipe that you'll see here is nuclear fuel reprocessing. So once, once you've used up the fuel cells, each one of these fuel cells lasts 200 seconds in the reactor, uh, which is, what, 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so 3 and a third minute. Okay, so in, rea in one reactor, these 20 fuel cells will last... Uh, let's see, three goes ten minutes. Uh, it'll last, what, at least an hour. Close to, yeah, I mean, between one and two hours. I don't know. <laughs> I'm being lazy with the math right now. It'll last a long time. So by then, I think we'll, we should have the 40 that we need. Um, one thing we could do is we could throw speed modules in all these to speed up the process. Um... In fact, I think I will do that. Uh, each one of these machines holds two modules, and I've got eight of them. So let's get let's get sixteen speed modules brought over here. Okay. Um, yeah, and the nuclear and the Covarex enrichment and the nuclear fuel reprocessing those have to be made in centrifuges as well. So I should make a few more centrifuges. Um, those take concrete, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so let me go, let's go down and grab some concrete. Okay. Looks like I got, I got six speed modules. All right. So if I wanted, let's say four more centrifuges, I need 400 concrete. One, two, three, four. And I need steel, as always. I always seem to be running out of steel. There's one, two, three. 
And then I need more red circuits. Four. There we go. Grab some iron plate. Okay, so I got four centrifuges coming. All right, and I'm going to be handling the fuel and everything with the robots. So before we even get started, I will set up the first centrifuge, which will do um, which will do the fuel reprocessing. Okay. So what we do there is each used uranium fuel cell will give us three uranium 238s back. Okay, and then we will quite simply just put a requester chest there. Asking for used uranium fuel cells. And I'm gonna set this to like a thousand. I mean, I don't think, we probably won't ever have 50 uranium fuel cells, but I'll just put a really high number on here so that way any and all used fuel cells will get brought over here. And then I will have those go to, I could put the output in a passive provider. My concern is that some of these things might get filled up at some point. I wonder if it would be better. No, this is fine. Okay. And then I'll have three more that I can use for the Covarex enrichment process. For now, I'm only going to use one. No, that's fine. Okay, but eventually I want to get I want to get some more of that running. All right, let's do this. Okay. So once we have 40 of those fuel cells, we can we can get this started and we'll set it up so that the output will basically just feed back into it. And it'll just keep cranking away until we've got, you know, the machines always try to load twice of what it needs to run the recipe, right? So uh, it'll continue to load in everything that comes out until it's got 80 of those uraniums. And then at that point, whatever excess gets produced will stay out of the machine. And you could set up some fancy circuits to make it so that it only loads 40 and then you always get your extra uranium out of it. But, um, I've just found that that's more trouble than it's worth. It sometimes is valuable to do that at the very beginning so that you can get more uranium to use right away. But it, uh, it honestly doesn't take long to get, to get what you need. You know, when, I mean, once you have like hundreds of the uranium 235s, then it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I do need more speed modules. I thought I, I guess I'm not, I'm not making them anymore because I dismantled my rocket control unit production. Right, so why don't I just, Ten. I think I had six. Okay, so let's grab our nuclear reactor building materials and start to build a reactor. Okay, so I'm going to take two nuclear reactors. Um, I'm going to take all the heat pipes. I'm just going to take everything I got here. I don't need that many heat exchangers. Why did I make so many? Uh, I think it's because I didn't know what the stack size was. All right, so let's limit that to one stack now and let's set this to, I don't know, three, uh, 50. Yeah, let's make that more. Okay, I do wanna have more than two, I'm sure of that. There we go. Okay, that'll be good enough to get started. Okay, so we need a lot of water. 
Uh, we're making fuel here, so I think building over in this area makes sense because I've got water there and I've got fuel close by. So that'll be a good place to start. Um, I'm not sure if we've got enough room there to really make this a long-term place to put all of our reactors, but for getting started with nuclear power, I think this location will be just fine. Okay, so we can make our first little reactor, reactor array right over here. Um, see, this is how you get fish. You can use your bot to pick up fish. Okay, so let's make an offshore pump. All right, now if you go to Factorio Cheat Sheet, which I'm gonna do right now, there is a section there that'll tell you all your ideal ratios between number of reactors and number of water pipes, uh, heat exchangers, and steam turbines. Okay, um, the, the simple build ratio is that for one reactor, you need one offshore pump, four heat exchangers, and seven turbines for one reactor. Now we're gonna start with two, and again, I'm gonna explain why in a moment, but for two reactors, uh, we need two pumps, 16 heat exchangers, 28 turbines, and that'll give us 160 megawatts of power. Okay, so let's make another one of those pumps. Okay, so let's just pick a place to put these. Uh, let's give ourselves a little bit of room. We'll put them there. Okay. Now the reason I start with two is because um, each reactor gets a neighbor bonus. And you can see that down at the bottom where it says output. It says 40 megawatts. So a single reactor will get 40 megawatts. Um, but when it has another reactor next to it, with fuel in it, it'll make not only 40 megawatts, but it'll get a, a neighbor bonus of 100%, which means that same reactor will double its output. Um, and so when you have two reactors side by side, you're gonna get 40 megawatts and 40 megawatts, and then each one is getting a neighbor bonus from each other. And then, so essentially each of these is giving the same output as two. So Having two reactors gives you the same, gives you four times the heat output as a single reactor. That's why I think it's just a good idea to start with, to start with two rather than just one, because you get four times as much energy for um, twice the number of reactors. It's a good deal. Okay, so for each one of these, I'm going to have a requester chest requesting nuclear fuel cells. Okay, and we don't need 50. I can request, uh, let's say five at a time. And then I'm gonna put an active provider. Let's put that right there actually. Copy. There we go. I'm just copying the settings. Okay, so that's to load the fuel in, and then that is to take the fuel out. And then the spent fuels go into the active provider, the bots pick them up, they take them over here to be reprocessed. Okay, I've got 14 of them now. We're making, we're making progress. Okay, so that'll load our fuel. And then eventually we'll have more reactors here, for example. Now in this case, each one of these reactors gets two neighbor bonuses because it gets one from here and it gets one from there. Neighbor bonus does not work diagonally. It only works up and down and left and right. And you could, whoops, you could eventually have even more reactors like this, right? And then you could feed them from the sides. If you do this, now this reactor gets one, two, three neighbor bonuses. So this reactor will be 
giving the same amount of output as four normal reactors. So, so as you stack these up, it becomes extremely powerful. Okay, so we'll need, we'll need some power. This is probably not the best way to do it. Let's use a large power pole. There we go. And there, so that connects us to the grid. And then we'll place a roboport, or at least enough roboports to get everything connected. Uh, so let's put one there, and let's put one there. Okay. Now there are no fuel cells in the system yet, but I'm just gonna dump these 20. Actually, I'm just gonna do this manually. I'm gonna put half of them in there. I'm gonna put half of them in there. Okay, and then they'll start to load. You know, they'll load five in. So you can see that one fuel cell has eight gigawatts. And like I said, it runs for 200 seconds. This is something that I know. All right, so if you have eight gigas, which is 8,000 megas, divide that by 200 seconds, you're getting 40 gigajoules or 40 megajoules per second, which is 40 megawatts. So that's where that 40 megawatts comes from. Um, and now that they have fuel, you can see that each one has 100% neighbor bonus. And you can see the temperature start to rise. Okay, it's currently at 300 and it's climbing. It'll go up to a thousand degrees. The magic number for us though is 500. We need 500 degrees to start making steam. Okay, so I need 16 turbines or heat exchangers. I'll put eight per side. Um, and then I need 28 turbines. I'll put 14 per side. All right, so we'll do eight and 14 on each side here. And, and what I wanna do is, uh, that's what these heat pipes are for. Um, and I'm, I wanna make sure that I connect the two reactors as well. Okay, so what the heat pipes do is they transfer the heat from the reactors to my heat exchangers. Okay, and they well, there's a variety of ways that they connect, but for now, I will connect them like this. So I need eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I just make sure that the heat pipe connects there. And you can hover over the heat pipe and see the temperature, right? The reactor temperature. The reactor temperature now has dropped because the heat pipes are taking heat out and it'll take some time for it to catch up. Okay, we're still burning those first of the fuel cells, but eventually it'll get up to 500 degrees. And when it does, they will start to make steam. Okay, so let's get them some water. Oh, perfect. Okay, and then I want to mirror that same thing over here. And if you look online, there are lots of very nice, cool and interesting designs for nuclear reactors. They come in all different sizes. This is a fairly simple one, right? And then each side needs, each side needs 14 steam turbines. Um, first I'm going to, I'm going to put all the steam into a pipe, right? So that they all work together. And then I will line up 14 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many is that? That's 12, 13, 14. Okay. So let's extend our pipe. Again, we'll copy the same thing. There we go. I don't have enough, but my bots should bring some more of these uh, turbines. Now the turbines is what actually creates power. So the turbines have to be 
have to be covered by power poles. Okay, or we could use we could use substations as well. That's perhaps a little more elegant. Let's make some of those. All right, because they reach nice and far, they can connect to the to the large power poles. Let's just set them up like that. There we go. And once again, I'll just copy. I'll go straight up from there so it's nice and symmetrical. Now I have to be careful because these three are not linked up to anything else. Okay, so I'm going to need... I'll need another one of these power poles. I wonder if I put this right in the middle. Yeah, if I put that in the middle, it'll link up everything. Okay, and you could see some steam coming out. Okay, that's because uh, some of the heat exchangers are now getting up to 500 degrees. Some others are not, but the ones that are at 500 degrees are starting to make steam. The steam goes into the turbines and that's how power happens. So now if I click here, bam, I can see that I'm making, well, now my solar power is kicking in, so I'm not pulling power from these anymore. Okay. All right, and so that's the simple way to get nuclear power started. Um, let's put the rest of our speed modules in over here. Um, yeah, I still only have 14. It'll take a while before we have enough to get the enrichment process going. In the meantime, we'll bring these up. Now the other thing, like, so here's, here's one of the drawbacks of nuclear power. You can't turn it off. Well, I mean, the only way to turn it off is to not give it any fuel. Okay, but um, you burn your fuel at the same rate whether you're making power with it or not. That's one of the drawbacks. So what some people will do is they will create a bunch of storage tanks and they'll store steam in the tanks because uh, the steam does get consumed based on how much power you're producing. So you could set it up so that um, so that you store any steam that you don't use to make power, and then you can stop feeding it fuel, and then you can you can re you know you can have the steam go into the turbines later, because when you put steam when you put 500 degree steam into a storage tank it'll stay at 500 degrees forever. <laughs> okay. So it's not very realistic, but if you really, you know, if you're really trying to optimize how you're playing the game, you can do that. And, um, when I first started using nuclear power in my games, I did all that stuff. I would store steam. I would set up these fancy circuits so that I would never insert nuclear fuel until my steam level dropped below a certain amount and then I set up circuits so that it would only insert one fuel cell at a time instead of five so that I could you know so I could shut the reactors down as soon as that fuel cell was done if I had enough steam you know you can get you can get pretty advanced and make it really complicated so I used to do that all the time and then you know, so at the beginning, I was really efficient with my fuel and my uranium. And then, you know, a few hours later in the game, I had like, I had a thousand fuel cells sitting there. I had a ton of uranium because I'm doing this Covarex enrichment. And at that point, there was really no reason to be so, to be.
be so stingy with my use of, of uranium. So now when I play the game, I just set it up like this. Yeah, it's not that efficient. You're kind of wasting some of your, your of your fuel when you're, you know, when you're heating up your reactors and you have plenty of solar power available. But I don't care anymore. I just run it. Um, it's a lot easier. And uh, so I think as long as you have, as long as you're mining enough uranium and you're processing it quick enough. Hey, there's another one. Awesome. Now I have 17. Sweet. Um, you know, as long as you're processing it fast enough, you're not going to run out of uranium. Uh, oh, this is new. The heat pipes are glowing. How cool is that? That, that was not always part of the game. That is really cool. They glow now, as they should, because they're really damn hot. Look, they're almost a thousand degrees C. That's quite hot. Okay, so this this will give us 160 megawatts, which, as you can see, is more than enough. Um, and look how little space it takes up compared to all of this plus all of this as we have been using, right? So once you got some solar for backup power, you've got some nuclear for your primary power, you can you can pretty much get rid of your get rid of your steam power. Now when we expand this, um, when I need more power, what I'll do is I'll add two more reactors over here. Okay, and then I'll have 200% neighbor bonus on everything, which means each reactor will have its own output plus 200%. Three times four is 12. So four reactors will give you 12 times the output of a single reactor. Um, That'll get you 480 megawatts. Um, and then at that point, you need 48 heat exchangers and 83 turbines and a lot more water. And it, it starts to grow a lot. So when we get to that point, it might have to be relocated depending on how much room we have. Or the other thing that we could do is we could start to grow this way and we could just use landfill to make more land over here. Um, as long as we have access to water, so. But for now, between this and the solar, I really don't need to do anything else. But I am still automatically making more stuff over here. So the nice thing is that when I do decide I need more power, I've already got two reactors, I've already got a bunch of heat exchangers and turbines, and, you know, I should have everything that I need already made, and I can just come over here and expand it. Okay, so so I would say at least as far as the nuclear power is concerned, we're set up. We do need to get the Covarex enrichment done, but we're going to have to wait on that. So um, let's rename this to Covarex enrichment so that we don't forget to get that running. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.